Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Frankie Slauson here, and I want to say thank you first of all to all the, the people who have viewed my the last interview that I did. It was kind of a big thing, uh, uh, interviewing the great Henry Thomas from uh, the man who starred as Elliot in E.T. But now we go from one thing to another, whether it's entertainment related or now book related. I have with me an author, and this is just no ordinary author. This is an author who is an award-winning author. His name is Kent Gustafson, and he wrote a book about the legendary Doc Watson called Blind, But Now I See. How's it going, Kent? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? Everything going all right? Oh, sure. Yeah, we're down here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where it's nice and warm. Oh yeah, you're lucky. You know, I I I'd, I'd trade you if you if you want some of our weather. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're getting some of your weather in a little while here. Oh jeez, <laughs> yeah, but your weather it will be just be temporary. I'm sure you get more nice weather than than uh, than we do anyway. Yeah, the Oklahoma. great thing about Tulsa is we get we get four seasons. Unlike uh, I grew up in Minnesota part of the time, and you, you get about a season and a half up there. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, do you live close to uh, Tornado Alley or anything like that? Or yeah, I guess there's that season too. So we get <laughs> we get five seasons. There's Tornado season, yeah. So <laughs> well, we, we get we get some of those too. But uh, for some reason, our little town that where I live in right now, anyway, has always been lucky. For some reason, it, it could be the worst day ever, and yet uh, the tornadoes will just pass us by. They'll they'll hit another town or something like that, or or the farm area, but they won't come near the town. I don't know why, but. That's a good thing, though. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, uh, you wrote a book. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, you were you told me you wrote a book about uh, Butch Patrick. I, I remember you were, you responded back to, uh, or you looked at my site, obviously, and you saw that I interviewed Butch, Butch Patrick. Yeah, yeah, Butch, uh, yeah, we worked on a, uh, I didn't actually write it, but we worked on it together, and um, it was a book that uh, Helen Darris wrote, and I worked with her and with Butch Patrick, uh, Eddie Munster, and um, yeah, that was that was pretty neat. And actually, uh, there's a uh, I just stumbled across a YouTube clip uh, the other day where Butch is defending his rights to Munsters.com. Oh yeah, and, uh, yeah. He actually he actually mentions me in there, and I had never seen that before. And it's funny he's talking about his publisher and a letter his publisher wrote, and <laughs> and uh, yes, he's mentioning this letter in there that, that I had written for him. It's pretty funny. <laughs> well, I, I think that's, that's that's just great because, you know, it's like a small freaking world for sure. I, I'd say so. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I interviewed him back in October for like a little Halloween show that I put together, but uh, it was a short interview. He was, uh, at that time, he was like getting ready to go uh, on a plane ride to somewhere anyway. I forget where it was, but, uh, so we didn't talk that long, but, uh, but it was still fun anyway, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Neat guy. Neat yeah. Guy. So let's talk about Doc watch it a little bit now i'll be perfectly honest with you the name like now now i'm kind of uh getting familiar with the name because i've listened to some of his songs on spotify that's a facebook app that uh facebook came out with uh some of his music they put out like geez i mean the guy has like i don't know how many freaking albums but he uh, i you know i honestly never really heard of the guy prior to my friend timmy d who was from uh atlanta georgia he was the one who told me about you about your book and before that, I was—I I, never—I don't think I've ever heard the, 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 the name before. Yeah, Doc is—he uh, he appeals to a whole bunch of folks from from old to young, but uh, we know him really best from um, sort of his influence on other people. So, I mean, a lot of the amazing uh, young music acts that we see coming up. Um, they were heavily influenced by Doc. So I mean, I, you know, just uh, just this last couple of days, we went to an old Crow Medicine Show uh, concert, and uh, they're they're pretty hip right now with with young folks. And um, you know, they were discovered by Doc Watson, and they play a lot of stuff in his style, and you know, all kinds of sort of uh, younger bands uh, grew up under Doc's uh, kind of uh, watchful eye. And, and all of, anybody who plays the acoustic guitar with a flat pick, you yeah. know. Um, anybody who does that is really using Doc's technique in some way. It's like his DNA is kind of like just dripped down through all these other different players who learned from him and, and throughout the years. So uh, what what got you kind of hooked up on the Doc Watson craze? I mean, because uh, there's so many different artists out there that uh, you could have wrote a book about. Why, why Doc? Well, I think... Um, he, he was most interesting to me because I, I grew up in Minnesota um, and actually in Louisiana, so strange places for bluegrass music. <laughs> um, but 
uh, I grew up listening to Prairie Companion on, on National Public Radio and, and uh, hearing we had a little bluegrass band up in uh, Marine on St. Croix, Minnesota, a tiny little town on the river. And uh, um, I just loved that music, but uh, when I was studying in college was the first time that uh, I really uh, started to get into Doc Watson. So it, it was quite a while, um, but I, I had a really uh, visceral connection to his music right away when I heard it in college. I just loved the sort of the honesty of his singing and the, and the incredible skills on the guitar. And you know, I just connected to it because it's sort of earthy and simple and and uh, he can play any he he could play any uh, any lick he wanted to, but he kept it simple, you know. So how long has the book been out for? Well, it's been out since uh, 2010, but uh, the the new edition of the book came out this year. I believe it was April or May. And there's a new edition of the book that's going to come out uh, next spring because um, you know Doc passed away this year, yeah. so um, it's going to all be you know of course in the past tense, and there's some new tributes and and some things like that so and hopefully that'll be the last edition and it'll, it'll <laughs> last <laughs> like that forever oh sure so uh, when when you uh decided to do this and whatnot how long did it actually take you to uh to write the book well it took probably about uh a decade really until okay. until now because you know this this last edition uh, had a whole bunch of new interviews and all that and there's a bunch of new interviews that I, I did this year with Pete Seeger and a bunch of cool folks. And um, so it's, it's been about a decade of work on Doc Watson, and um, it's been an interesting time. I've, I've learned out a, a whole bunch about Appalachian folk music and, and had a chance to talk to you know just about anybody uh, that I admire in, in acoustic music, you know. Sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's kind of amazing, you know, how that uh, style of music still I mean I don't know I mean it, it's it's still popular but but it's like now more young people want uh, the ones who don't have a clue what music is all about love the uh, would prefer the Justin Bieber over somebody like Doc Watson uh-huh. <laughs> right well and there were there were some times where uh, like in 1972 Doc got up on the charts with his song uh, Tennessee Stud and it was uh, with the nitty gritty dirt band and yeah. it was it, you know it hit the charts and but but it, you know yeah Doc's music never really has been at the top you know uh, but you know the the movie Oh Brother Where Art Thou came out and I think it was two thousand yeah and one of one of Doc's songs uh, Down to the River to Pray Alison Krauss she sang it and made that a hit and there's there's been kind of some times where Doc's music has come all the way to the top but but it's really Doc's influence that's the most important so. Um, um, you know, Ben Harper, for example, is one guy I interviewed for the book. Um, he's still pretty hip and uh, playing some amazing shows. And Ben Harper um, uh, loved Doc's music. And um, his parents, um, or his his mother, uh, when she was growing up, uh, Doc Watson stayed at their house, and along with a bunch of other folk musicians and things. So it, it's like there's a and he talks about this direct line from the way Doc plays the guitar down to the way Ben Harper plays, you know. So there's a that, and you know, Bob Dylan oh, yeah. uh, had a direct influence to, <laughs> from Doc, and Bob Dylan's influenced everybody, <laughs> you know. <since> <laughs> Pretty guys. much, so, yeah. Yeah, it's like Doc's the sort of great grandfather of yeah. of guitar playing, you know. Well, you know what they say. I mean, it's like uh, music had to come from somewhere. A lot of people nowadays, today, I mean, b- believe it or not, there's some people that still don't. You know, they don't like the old time music because because they don't understand it. They don't understand that if it wasn't for guys like Doc Watson or Hank Williams Sr. or I don't know, like Buddy Holly or you know, just to name a few, I who knows what music would be like today. You gotta have your influences. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I like I like that you brought up Hank Williams uh, and and uh, Buddy Holly because those you know Buddy Holly influenced everybody. Yeah. You know, yes, and that's he did. something. It's, it's too bad he died so young, but oh, man, yeah. he influenced everybody. And, and and Hank Williams, I mean, I was just at Kane's Ballroom listening to Old Crow Medicine Show. I mean, it's that amazing sound they had. Now, Doc, Doc, he only started his career at age uh, about age forty, and that's the interesting thing about yeah. him. So he was the same age as these guys. He was the same age as Buddy Holly, same age as Hank Williams, Elvis, you know, Earl Scruggs, all those guys. But he only started his career at age forty, and then was you know. Yeah, uh, until he was eighty nine, he was still playing on stages. So until the last couple of years. Yeah, for the geez, that's a good forty nine year run, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. So, uh, uh, 
Yeah. I mean, and, and you know that that can happen for people. I mean, you know, there's probably some artists out there that or that grew up and never thinking that oh, I'm not going to be in the entertainment business. I mean, what do I, what do I know? Nobody's going to want to listen to what I have to play. But but then they they go up on stage where I suppose thanks to nowadays these uh, uh, American Got Talent or American Idol stuff or whatever. But more importantly, they go up on these talent shows or whatever. They try to perform the best that they can, and then people love it. People fall in love and. You know, it's hard to say what would life be like if a doc would have started today rather than when he was 40, but, you know, I, I think he probably would have still made it, you know? Yeah, and it's, well, it's a different world of music than it was then. I, you know, one of the one of the great uh, flat-picking guitarists um, that I had a chance to talk to, Dan Crary, he, um, he, he always talks about doc came up at the exact right time. So it's, people didn't really play the acoustic guitar much, um before Doc. I mean, you know, electric guitar was hip, and Doc actually played a Telecaster in, you know, some hillbilly bands, and, um, but, you know, the acoustic guitar had never really been a lead instrument, because, you know, you didn't have microphones to <laughs> make that possible, you yeah. know, the fiddle would have been out front, and the banjo, and, or something else, and or the, these electric yeah. guitars, but... Yeah. And the way but, that, uh, yeah, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I, I was just going to say, you know, but, but Doc made it possible for the guitar to be a, a really featured instrument. And that's, you know, I, I don't know that, I don't know that he would have made it the same way these days. I mean, he'd have to be a really hard working, yeah. you know, um, the guys out there today that are playing, you know, this kind of music, even old Crow Medicine show, they're out there like every night and playing the heck out of it and not earning too much money, so... So who do you uh, who do you think uh, or do you know who inspired Doc to be a part of the music industry? Oh sure, yeah, yeah. No, I mean he grew up in the twenties and, and thirties listening to uh, records and radio, and I mean he heard all the old stuff. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, if people dig back, you can find all this stuff now online uh, for free usually because they're old seventy eight records of. Um, Gid Tanner and the Skillet Lickers. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> that's, that's a fun one, yeah. Yeah. And there's like um, uh, the um, some of the most beautiful uh, brother duets you could think of um, uh, that Doc would imitate. And then, of course, you know, uh, Bill Monroe um, and the Bluegrass Boys, the early recordings, and that's all cool. these amazing. And, and he would listen to some sort of blues records too, um, you know, Charlie Poole and, and uh, all these really neat sort of amazing roots records from the 20s and 30s and that's what he kind of that's what he kind of heard and then the sort of spiritual music from his church you know just hymns and that kind of stuff um so that's what he heard growing up but then um he was actually you know one when, when he was in his 20s and stuff he was influenced by hank williams oh, you know, yeah, and by yeah. uh, merle travis and sure. And uh, Ernest Tubb, and, and <laughs> he was playing country country guitar like that. So, and he, it was only you know yeah. on when he was just hanging around with old people in the, in the area that he would play this old time music. And a guy from New York City came down and discovered Doc playing this old this old music, and said, "Man, I, I've never seen a young person." Well, Doc was in his thirties, but yeah. I've never seen a young person playing that old music before. So, so do you think that uh, Doc was like a would have been like a good, a big Buddy Holly fan. I mean, as inspiration. Yeah, he probably was. You know, <laughs> I, I uh, he he did listen to a lot of. You know, he listened to Elvis. He played. You know, um, all kinds of rock and roll tunes. And yeah, yeah, I'll bet he, I'll bet he was. Um, <laughs> uh, because you know, the cool thing that Doc really teaches everybody, and and uh, I don't know if you know, like the next generation, like Tony Rice and Sam Bush, and all the guys that. You know, David Grisman, the guys that hung out with Jerry Garcia and oh, okay. um, Taj Mahal, and all, all these guys that are of the sort of next generation, Ry Cooter. Uh, you know, they they really felt this freedom because Doc didn't see style as much. These these kids could come out and play a rock and roll tune, and Doc would would love it. You know, even though he was an older generation. So, huh. yeah, no, that, that's that's cool because. Uh, you know, we're talking with uh, Kent Gustafson, who wrote a book uh, about Doc Watson called Blind, But Now I See it. You know, it's kind of interesting because of the fact that he's a, a blind singer. You know, you don't find too many blind people wanting to become musicians, and that's, you know, because you wonder how the heck are they going to do it. But, uh, you know, they, they do it, and they're successful. I have a friend, believe it or not, I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not, but he, he's not mainstream or whatever, but he's trying to be anyway. 
Uh, he's from Thief River, originally from the Red Lake Indian Reservation in Minnesota. His name is uh, Bobby Hooley, and I don't know if you ever heard the Hooley brothers before, but that's like his grandparents or grandpa and the, the uncles. Whatever. They, they they played a, a song called uh, Dream Night. Back, and it was like a hit for them back in the 50s or 60s or whatever. Anyway, Bob uh, became inspired with music, uh, music, and he became a blues singer, and he's legally blind. So, huh. <laughs> yeah, I think I think yeah, I think part of what that, part of my research, the the fun part, was actually digging into Doc's time at the school for the blind down in in North Carolina, because you know Doc was this is the mid 30s, uh, and he he wouldn't have gotten a great education up in the hills where he grew up so his his siblings didn't get much education but because doc was blind he actually went to this school for the blind um where you know he was mistreated um or whatever from time to time and he always talked about that but he he got a great education um for for the the was it three or four years he was there uh, anything from uh you know piano tuning to to piano playing and singing and music theory but then he also learned how to like cane chairs you know like uh and uh uh do all this other amazing stuff like even uh, engineering and taking stuff apart like radios and all that stuff yes. so he he um he he learned uh he really learned an amazing number of skills there but one of the things they taught was music i mean and and they taught it in any possible way and how to how to use music to, to make a career. Um, and I think every school for the blind and blind community especially really encourages that because you don't really need your eyes um, yeah. to do, uh, unless unless it's sight-reading music. And you can kind of sight-read music in Braille and whatever, but, you know, by ear musicians, jazz musicians, oh, it's amazing how many folks um, that are blind uh, are just extraordinary musicians. So uh, let, let's talk about uh, about you now, uh, as we're switching from talk to, to, to you. Uh, how did you get started with the love of writing books? And did you always think that you were going to be an author, or did you think you were going to do something else for a mainstream job? Well, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, they tell you in, in uh, school all the way along, you know, you're supposed to choose something, and I, I wasn't yeah. very good at choosing what I wanted to do. But Me neither. But in college... <laughs> Yeah, no, in college, um, I found that there was this option to study music, and uh, after studying biology for a couple of years, I, I just, I dropped everything and started studying music, and um, I ended up getting my PhD in music, um, and teaching, and, and doing all sorts of great stuff, but um, it's been a really interesting thing to get into the world of books, and I, I've, I've um, in particular, this project there's so much expression uh, in writing about someone, yeah. uh, and it, it, it's very similar to, to writing music. Uh, but but my mother's an, an author, and, and I, I grew up around writers and things like that. So that's that's where that comes from. So you got any uh, upcoming uh, titles that we can talk about that, or, or give a preview to that are, are in the works? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, there's always more projects, but um, I'm, I'm doing a little bit more. Um, uh, speaking uh, uh, that I'm going to start doing uh, around the country and, and things like that. But um, for right now, um, the third edition of this book is going to come out in the spring, and, and that's exciting. Um, and, and for right now, um, this book is still selling pretty well, and, and I've been, uh, you know, happy about it. But there's always new projects, always always good stuff to be, to be working on. And I, I haven't figured out if I'll ever do another biography again, because I think it's pretty insane to, to do these kind of projects. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I, I say go for it, because, you know, you, you're you successful with, with this book, you're successful with the Butch Patrick book, I say I say go for it. I mean, what, what do you got to lose? The, the worst that people, yeah. the worst can people, or people can say is no, you know? Exactly. Got any suggestions for me on a, on a uh, subject? I think I do. I think you could do, like, uh, well, we mentioned about Buddy Holly, and I know there's probably been a lot of people that wrote books about Buddy Holly, but you could do him, or you could probably do, like, uh, I don't know if anybody's really, really writing books about, like, Waylon Jennings, or... And if it's not music that you want to do anything on, you could do, like, TV show stars, like uh, maybe Bob Saget, or Ray Romano, or, or Dave Coulet, or, you know, there's so many different uh, uh, thing, people out there that you could easily try. Or, you know, uh, what we, I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, uh... Henry Thomas, star of E.T., you know, he's not just, he's known for E.T., but he's done a lot of other things that people don't know about. So, I don't know, I mean, it's just, 
it just depends on what you want to do and what you feel uh, you it would make you a success and have fun doing. Well, and then there has to be some level of, of obsession. So yeah. I, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good, very good. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, where can people uh, pick, up, uh, pick up the book if they want to buy well, it? Well, it should be, it's pretty much available uh, anywhere. So, uh, you know, if you you can walk into your neighborhood and um, if, if they don't have it on the shelf, you, you, you say, uh, can you order me a copy of this thing? Otherwise, you know, anywhere people go, Barnes & Noble online or Amazon or any independent stores online and and uh yeah that's it all right well thanks a lot for this uh, little interview and uh kent watson with uh, the book doc or kent watson kent gustafson <laughs> see I, I mashed it up together you know now i made you relative <laughs> though I, like that. I, I, I should just go by kent watson oh there you go simpler. there you go well frankie slauson <laughs> frankie's just my nickname my real name sean but you know uh, who knows you know, uh, uh, elias is, is good to have Anyway, Kent, I want to thank you for uh, this uh, interview, and uh, yeah, yeah, people, go pick it up. Uh, it's a good read. I've been browsing a little bit. You sent me that uh, Amazon Kindle version. I don't have a Kindle, but I was able to listen to read a little bit on the cloud reader. So it's going to take me a little while to finish it, but I uh, but I appreciate you letting me do that. Sure, and thank you for the interview. I, I appreciate it. All right, have a good day. All right, everybody, that was Kent Gustafson, and uh, he wrote the book. On the biography music legend of Doc Watson, Blind But Now I See. And uh, thanks again for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you guys soon.